The Titanic, a British ocean liner operated by the White Star Line, suffered a tragic fate in the North Atlantic Ocean. The ship sank after colliding with an iceberg during her maiden voyage from Southampton, England, to New York City. This disaster remains the deadliest peacetime sinking of an ocean liner or cruise ship. The Titanic, built by the Harland and Wolfe shipyards in Belfast, Northern Ireland, was an impressive ship measuring 882 feet 9 inches in length with a maximum width of 92 feet 6 inches. She had 10 decks, each with different purposes, from housing lifeboats on the boat deck to housing first-class cabins and public spaces on the promenade and lounge decks. The ship carried a diverse range of passengers, including wealthy individuals and numerous immigrants seeking a new life in America and Canada. Despite its significant impact on literature and film, the sinking of the Titanic remains an enigmatic event in history. Here are some of the preserved photos of the Titanic before it sank. The Boy on the Deck of the Titanic In the iconic 1997 film Titanic, there is a scene showing a young boy engrossed in playing with a spinning top on the deck of the ship. Interestingly, this scene is a recreation of an actual photograph taken aboard the Titanic. The photograph was captured on one of the upper decks of the Titanic just days before the tragic ship met its fateful end. The date was April 11, 1912. The photograph shows a six-year-old boy named Robert Douglas Spedden, who was merrily amused spinning his top while his father and other passengers watched the scene. Young Robert was a first-class passenger belonging to a wealthy family. Accompanied by his family, he was traveling on the Titanic back to his residence in Tuxedo Park, New York, after a family outing in Algeria. But what happened to this young boy? Well, he was sound asleep when the Titanic collided with the iceberg. In the chaos of the sinking, he woke briefly to his nanny, Elizabeth Burns, assuring him that she would take him on a trip to see the stars. It is said that Robert fell back asleep unaware of the unfolding tragedy. When he finally woke up the next morning, he found himself in a lifeboat, having survived the calamity. Tragically, Robert's story took a fatal turn in 1915, at the tender age of nine, when he died prematurely after being struck by a car in Maine. Considering the limited number of cars on the roads at that time, his accident stands out as one of the earliest recorded car-related incidents in state history. The Iceberg That Sank the Titanic It's widely known that the sinking of Titanic was caused by an iceberg, but get this, just two days before the disaster, the captain of another ship crossing the Atlantic was lucky enough to take an incredible black and white photograph of a massive iceberg. And the most shocking thing is that it is believed to be the same iceberg that sank the Titanic. This sea captain, named W. Wood, served on the SS Etonian, a British merchant ship, and had a passion for photography. Fortunately, he had his camera close at hand and managed to capture the vastness of that iceberg. The really interesting part is that Captain Wood wrote down the exact coordinates of the iceberg, which were almost exactly where the Titanic collided and sank, killing 1,522 people. Upon arriving in New York, Captain Wood shared the photo and sent a copy to his great-grandfather with a letter stating that this iceberg was the cause of the Titanic disaster. On the photo, he wrote in bold black ink, Iceberg taken by Captain Wood SS. Etonian, at 41 degrees 50 minutes north latitude and 49 degrees 50 minutes west longitude on April 12th at 4 p.m. Although other photos of icebergs have been seen in the Titanic's path over the past century, what makes Captain Wood's photo intriguing is that the shape of the iceberg closely resembles eyewitness drawings and descriptions of the Titanic. Iceberg that sealed the fate of the Titanic in its tragic crash at 10.20 p.m. on April 14, 1912, sinking in three hours. Third-class passengers. This next photo offers a glimpse into the experience of third-class passengers, also known as foredeck passengers, settling in aboard the Titanic. On the Titanic, 
third-class passengers shared communal bathrooms, ate together in dedicated dining facilities, and slept in cabins with four occupants to a room. Despite being considered third-class, the accommodations provided to these passengers on the Titanic were remarkably good compared to what they were used to. Although the space allotted to third-class passengers was relatively small and they had access to very few amenities, a notable benefit to them was that they were provided with meals, a significant improvement compared to many other steamships of the time, where he expected the foredeck passengers to bring their own food. Although the third-class cabins were in less favored areas of the Titanic, close to the noise of the engines, they had amenities such as running water and electricity. Single men were accommodated at the front of the ship, while single women and families were in the stern, where there were larger cabins for them. Despite the fact that the cabins, although spacious for the time, were irregularly shaped to fit the shape of the ship, in addition to the cabins, there was a common room for third-class passengers to meet, read, and play games, and while they couldn't use the gym or pool, they hosted their own parties. Most of the 700 third-class passengers were immigrants seeking a future in the United States via the Titanic. Unfortunately, many did not make it, as only 25% survived the tragedy, and only a small part of that group were men. Titanic Life Jackets This photo is part of an album of a passenger who left the Titanic before it sank. The Titanic had life jackets for everyone, made of canvas and cork, but their design was fragile and they were tied with ropes. Tragically, as the Titanic sank, some passengers jumped into the water and were knocked unconscious by the impact due to the design of the vests. Many drowned or sustained injuries. After World War II, the design of cork vests was improved. Although there were problems, original Titanic vests still exist and have fetched high prices at auction. The Captain and the Quartermaster of the Titanic This photo shows Captain Edward J. Smith, the British captain of the Titanic, with the ship's quartermaster, Hugh Walter Makara. The image was taken by a passenger who disembarked in Queenstown, Ireland, three days before the tragic sinking. Unfortunately, both lost their lives in the disaster. Three days after starting his first voyage from Southampton, Captain Smith continued his Sunday routine, inspecting the ship and conducting a church service. As night fell on April 14, 1912, the temperature dropped and the surface of the Atlantic appeared calm making it difficult to detect icebergs in the region in spring. Despite the conditions, Captain Smith maintained top speed, confident that the crew could react quickly to icebergs. However, on the night of April 14th, he was not on the bridge when the ship collided with an iceberg. Upon learning of the damage, he asked Thomas Andrews, the Titanic's designer, to assess it, who determined that the ship would sink. At 2.20 a.m., on April 15th, the Titanic suffered the tragic fate of her. Captain Smith was last seen on the bridge, though reports of saving a child were largely dismissed. His body was never found. Opinions on Smith's actions vary. Some criticize not slowing down, while others say he thought he could maneuver. The absence of him on the bridge during the encounter with the ice field is also questioned. 